Peace. What's good? How y'all doing? Welcome to Headline News with Zaza Ali, a weekly news segment highlighting local, national, and global events, particularly those being censored by mainstream media. Headline News with Zaza Ali airs weekly exclusively on the Zaza Ali membership channel. This is episode 56, which I am titling Stranger Things for a number of reasons, which I will, I will explain in just a second, but I am glad that episode 55 was a love episode so that it was sort of geared towards more positive, abundant, um, you know, creative sort of vibration energy. So that helps me to balance out um, when I talk about, you know, a epi- when I do an episode like that and then juxtapose an episode, an episode that is interestingly called Stranger Things. And the reason for that title is there have been a lot of things happening in mainstream global news that I've kind of just been saving and wanting to talk about, but also, you know, wanting to paint a bigger picture and not just kind of like spotlighting these things in headline news, which is what we normally do. Um, But, you know, I always try to go to the make the metaphysics point of whatever, you know, needs to be made. And so there are several subjects um, built within this presentation today that, um, you know, aid to that. And so I'm very excited about this episode. It is uh, well put together. We talk about a lot of different subjects, but still staying under the banner of what I conceive to be stranger things. Strange things, but stranger things just to kind of tie into the Netflix um, the Netflix show. So I'm not going to hold you guys. I'm going to go get right. I'm going to get right into this because we have a lot of things to cover today. Um, to start out, I wanted to bring back up the concept of the morphic field. Um, I'm going to read this passage from the book that we just finished reading in um, the book club, the book club membership, um, The Hidden Messages in Water. And this is a passage from that book that talks about the morphic field. And I'm going to be underscoring that as I go through all of these different slides and talk about the importance of the collective consciousness, understanding how we resonate within uh, and are affected by the collective consciousness, AKA, I feel like the morphic field is a variant of that, um, different in a certain regard, but then also connected and the same in another regard. And so along with the collective consciousness, you know, we as individuals, our thinking and how we're feeling is more important now than ever. So, emphasizing that as, you know, whether we're talking about the love frequency and the love energy or whether we're talking about the chaos and insanity happening in the world, having to be mindful and aware that how we're thinking and feeling is 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 greatly affecting the collective consciousness. So that's why I'm going to be emphasizing that point throughout this, this message today. Um, it's often said that if something happens twice, it will happen again. Perhaps you have found it strange that accidents and crimes tend to happen in a series. Looking at history and social trends, you can see that over long periods of time, events do generally repeat themselves. How can we explain this strange repetition of events? Dr. Sheldrake attempted to use scientific means to find an answer. According to his theory, when the same thing repeats itself, a morphic field is formed and resonance with this morphic field increases the likelihood that the event will happen again. A morphic field is not energy-based information, but more like a blueprint for building a house. We can see this as an example of resonance theory. Dr. Sheldrake has proposed, proposed that events are capable of resonating in the same way that sound resonates. He refers to the location where such events take place as the morphic field and the phenomena of repeated similar events as morphic resonance. Again, that is from The Hidden Messages in Water um, by Dr. Masaru Emoto. Um, but so keeping that in context with everything that you know is going on in the collective consciousness, the situation in Diddy, which I'm getting ready to talk about in a second, um, the trauma and the triggering of something like that trending on a global on a global scale um, is is the main reason why I wanted to start out with this. It gets really meta in the episode of Joe Rogan. Terrence Howard talks about the morphogenic field. 
It would take me hours to explain everything there is to know about this field. I'm just going to give you the clip notes that are absolutely important for you right now. If a particular crystalline structure has never formed on the Earth before, the chances that it will once are very low. But once it does form, just one time, the chance that it'll do it again increases exponentially. And it's not because the crystalline structure, the first one that forms, propagates more of them. It doesn't give birth to them. It doesn't duplicate itself. So there's no reason that the next crystalline structure of the same type should form any quicker than the first one did. But it does. And once that crystalline formation forms two times, the chances it'll do it a third time is even better than the second time. And you see an exponential curve of manifestation of a new structure. Now, it doesn't just work for structures. We're still talking about the morphogenetic field here. It also works with ideas. You may have heard about the numerous experiences that were proven over and over again that when they taught a particular species of animals in a certain locale, let's say, on the mainland of Africa, if they taught them a certain new behavior, uh, like teaching monkeys how to use sticks to get termites or teaching a crow about water displacement, uh, members of the same species on other areas like islands and even other continents would pick up the behavior spontaneously. This is the same reason that when that first crystalline structure forms, it gives rise for the ability for that crystalline structure to form again and again at an exponential rate. Have you heard the story about the first person who ran the four-minute mile? Before they did it, it was thought to be humanly impossible to run the four-minute mile. Our bodies just couldn't do it. Luckily, there was a guy who didn't believe that. And he trained and he trained and he trained. And eventually, he ran the four-minute mile. And after he ran the four-minute mile, two weeks later, somebody else did. What changed from when they thought it was humanly impossible to when many people started doing it? Nothing except everyone started to believe it was possible. Human physiology didn't change, or maybe it did. Maybe the belief that we could do it actually changed our bodies. Or maybe we had a little mental limiter in our brain that stopped our bodies, stopped our muscles from being as strong as they could be. Hearing Terrence Howard out and everything that he has to say will open up new areas of your mind. It will take all those limiters off You'll start to see the world in a new and expanding way. This is why they put so much terror and stress into the internet and the media and everywhere they possibly can, because they are terrified of the moment that someone gets the idea that they can be free, that they deserve all the knowledge and wisdom that is available in the world. Because once one person truly believes it, it'll be much quicker for the second person when you start getting two, three, four, five, that exponential curve will turn the whole world over. And that's what they're truly terrified of. People like Terrence Howard are people that are helping to turn that world over in the right direction. So the same, in the same way that when he talks about the crystalline structure, and if we go back to the images that we saw in the hidden messages of water, how the images, the water that was spoken to with love and with you know, positive energy and abundant, you know, thought and intention formed a crystalline structure within the water, but the water that was uh, ignored, the water that was talked to negatively, the water that was sent negative energy formed moldy like substances and conditions, right? And so this same science uh, that he's referencing, that he referenced in the book and that he's referencing that Terrence, um, uh, Howard represent uh, reference is just like the placebo versus the nocebo, right? The placebo can work to your be to your benefit. You take a sugar pill, you think you got the cure. All of a sudden, your body has you know released a disease or purged a disease that you've been fighting for 10, 20 years, right? These are factual medical uh, uh, events that happen all the time. Versus um, the no nocebo effect, meaning a doctor tells you you have six months to live, that your body is rap rapidly deteriorating and there's nothing that they can do about it. And you accept that to be truth, truth, which your body, your belief system is what, you know, is activating or deactivating. I think it would be an appropriate word, your cells. And so your body starts to acclimate to what the belief is. 
right? And so the same thing with the morphic field, when we're placing our imprint on the morphic field, whether it's for the expansion, expansion of consciousness or whether it's for the contraction, which technically consciousness doesn't contract, but the potential of humanity, the potential of the mind of the individual can absolutely contract. That's what depression is. That's what anxiety and, and, and worry and fear is, right? It's a contraction of the mind because the mind is ever expanding, ever growing, and, you know, always trying to take in data and content. So there's a video, uh, and I just thought about it as he was talking, of fleas. A uh, scientist did an experiment with a bunch of fleas who were in a jar and put a lid on the jar. And basically all of the fleas were, you know, stuck in this jar, kind of buzzing around. Doctor takes the, or the scientist takes the lid off of the uh, jar. And because the uh, fleas, not only the ones who were present during the initial experiment, but now they have, uh, you know, replicated themselves, procreated, and now they have given birth to another generation or, you know, their children, if you will. And uh, so you had the original plus the new and they take the, the the lid off of the jar and none of the flies try to escape because they have been absolutely, I'll say vibrationally conditioned to accept that that is the response, that is the, the reality of their circumstances. And they won't ever leave, they'll just all die whether while they're in the jar, right? And I think that that's a perfect metaphor and example for the, the fear-based consciousness and the lack-based consciousness that they have humanity in. It's not even real. There's no ceiling. There's no jar that's locked that's preventing us from move up, moving up the, you know, the ladder of success or, or life, so to speak. It's a condition of the mind. And then the, the morphic field in terms of you know, accepting that this is reality as an individual and then in a collective empowers the the situations and circumstances that these people have. You know, again, this is a conversation about stranger things, <laughs> but I like the point that he made about freedom, which is what all of this is about, whether we're talking about the morphic field or Satan or vaccines or chemtrails or scary stuff or fascinating, wonderful stuff. All of it in the, in the in the bigger scheme of things is to move us towards freedom, freedom of the mind, freedom of the soul, freedom of the heart, right? Freedom in, in, in being limited in our perspectives and being able to think for ourselves. That's what it's all about. So that's why it's important. This is Diddy. This is for context a couple of years ago for Halloween. It's important. It's important. Don't be rude. <laughs> <laughs> 
special mates. Oh. <laughs> Everything's so serious, but we're about to go to Club Law. Um. Club Law! Yo, we don't play that, baby! <laughs> So I wanted to start with that video and we I played this, I'm pretty sure, in a previous headline news one or two when I discussed this. And because I, it was something very, very odd and strange. I remember watching this in real time because I was following Diddy at the time on Instagram and I and I watched this unfold and and you know him sort of going into this character. And I just found it to be very strange how how he how much he acclimated to the character. Like, did you go to acting class for this? Because uh, what's the actor's name who played this part? Um, not Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, I forget his name. Uh, Heath Ledger. This role, if 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 what we remember to be true, drove him crazy. Suicidal, right? Um, so. I was just very sort of perplexed at how 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 deep he got into this Halloween character. And, you know, this this Halloween, we understand that this is an energetic vortex and a portal in terms of time when people sort of tap into that lower energy. It's a time that the lower energy is celebrated. Right. And so that stood out to me. And then not too long after that, he releases the love out love album, which I'm going to talk about next. But he was also uh, honored at the Grammys. There was a whole bunch of, you know, energy surrounding him within within the the mainstream media, right? Positive energy. And so, fast forward to where we are today, where this video comes out and completely traumatizes and triggers entire generations of not just women, but women and, you know, men who were victims of domestic violence in terms of being in houses where they were raised, girls and boys, daughters and sons, raised in environments where they were uh, have witnesses, right, to this level of trauma. We talk about the women who are in these experiences a lot, but we don't talk about what it's like to, to grow up as a child in an environment where you were witnessing these type of things. And then the psychology of that happening for a boy versus the psychology of a girl, right? Boys tend to become abusers following in those footsteps, and then girls tend to become victims all over again by attracting abusers, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, there's no rule of thumb that says this is only about the male, you know, men being abuser, abusers, because obviously we know that there are female abusers, but there, it's very clear, and all of us should be very clear, that the the ratio of male on female domestic violence versus, you know, the other is 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 a very different starch, uh, staunch, com, you know, variance in conversation, right? Um, 
but still just to stick to what, what's happening right now in the collective consciousness. This is major, the release of this video, which we know that they've had all this time. So why now, right? Because they're getting, they're burying him. Um, and this is a major ritual on his behalf. So whatever ring he kissed and whoever, you know, he had to, to diddle <laughs> in order to get to the position that he's in. And, and the, the other thing I want to say about the, the Joker uh, character is that it's becoming so evidently clear that a lot of these celebrities are under satanic ritual mind control programs. Kanye West, for sure. Diddy, for sure. Beyonce, for sure, right? There's a, bit, a, a very long list of, of things that have happened. Travis Scott, right? Um, um, Playboy Cardi, uh, you know, Nicki Minaj, a lot of different things that have happened in terms of the way that they're represented in their concerts, in their videos, the symbolism, right? So those with ears to hear and eyes to see can see these things. Right. And it's critical for us to be able to see these things because discernment right now is key. We have to know if somebody knocks on the door, be able to tell vibrationally. Even if they are, you know, coming with flowers in hand and in, in, in the name of love, vibrationally, we have to be able to pick up on. This type of energy. So I'm one thousand percent, you know, cancel Diddy to the end of the bank and back pure 100% denunciation on my behalf. There is absolutely no way I'm trying to, you know, talk about why she stayed or legitimize this or make any excuses. Nope. Let the dead bury the dead. I want to say that for a second to let that just sit in the ethers because I'm seeing a lot of neutrality and, you know, really soft-hearted cowardice behavior when it comes to giving this the proper attention that it deserves. Not just the fact that it's Diddy and Cassie, but the fact that domestic violence is a real serious cancer in American society. And it's a real serious cancer in the black community. So I think that all current abusers, male abusers of females operating in the domestic violence capacity should be getting the Diddy treatment. All of the Fortune 500 CEOs, all of the politicians, local, national, state, Right. How many of those people, the House of Representatives and Senate and presidents and Supreme Court justices, et cetera, how many of them do you think are capable of this type of behavior? I think the number is much higher than we think. Rap is very current. Modern rap is very anti-female. The current frequency in the podcasting is very anti-female. A lot of the energy in the religious sectors and in the spiritual uh, spaces is very anti-female, not on the surface. But when you close the doors, right? So the rape culture, the Me Too culture, all of that, the pedophilia culture is absolutely relative. I'm here for all of those who support and who worship and who, you know, secretly and overtly are working for Satan. Like this video, this image of Diddy and Cassie. The wickedness in this image that's being reverberated within the morphic field, coming back to that. Triggering women, triggering people all over the world. We should have a hashtag cancel culture or hashtag domestic violence. <laughs> From the top of the pyramid all the way to the little guy at the bottom. I'm here for that. And again, as I you know, have referenced before when I've talked about this, just in terms of the power plays that's, that are taking place, I hope we all know that when Cassie moved forward with her lawsuit through her attorneys, et cetera, and even making the decision, she knows who Diddy's real handlers are and the people who he's bowing down to and, and doing all kind of weird things on behalf of and with at the same time. So we have to know and understand that she had to get their permission to move forward. The fact that this film was released on CNN, this is all part of the play. These are the same people that put him in the billionaire status and who gave him the connections and you know the hidden hand, so to speak, 
are now exposing him and using him as a an example for all of the other people in Hollywood that they control. This is what can and will happen to you if you don't do what we tell you to do. Because they're, you know, the ask, the devil's ask always increases. You can never fulfill his or its desires. So I see, I've seen post 2020 and I'm continue to, continuing to see it, that celebrities are now being hung out to dry in front of the world for obvious reasons because of whatever oath they took, you know, uh, whatever the nature of those relationships are. But then at the same time, this is the real life movie happening in real time that everybody is 1000% tuned into. The energy harnessing just from this situation is absolutely mind blowing. How many videos do you think have been made on YouTube about this subject? Take a guess. It's a hypothetical question, but I'm just saying. So it's feeding the it's feeding the chaos. It's harnessing the energy both ways because on the surface they're like, yeah, we're exposing him. This guy's a bad guy. He needs to be brought to justice. The women are the you know I'm talking about the powers that be, the media and whatnot. So they're they're they make it look like that on one level. So you got his suffering, his family suffering, and everybody that's wrapped up in the insanity and chaos of his world. But then you have all of the people that are being triggered. All of the people that are being traumatized from watching this and going back and, and having real life energy and vibrations from something that happened to them 10, 15 years ago. Remember the morphic field, it's still alive. Those experiences, those connections, those vibrations, they become a part of our energetic resonance. Unless of course we work to clean those things out and detox our, our energetic field. How many people are doing that? If we had done that, then the triggering wouldn't have the type of power that it has. I didn't realize how controlled the music industry is until I made this chart. See, I wanted to know how many of this last year's top 100 songs were produced by Universal Music Group, whose CEO is Lucien Grange, who was directly named in the recent P. Diddy lawsuit that alleged that he has hundreds of hours of video footage and audio recordings of all of this illegal stuff going on, providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers, uh, drugging and sexually assaulting people, underage girls, shootings, all kinds of drugs and firearm, and sketchiest of all, these crazy parties being hosted in houses wired up with secret cameras in every room, like Jeffrey Epstein style. There's photographic evidence included in the lawsuit. Pause if you want to read this. And the lawsuit directly alleges that CEO of Universal Music Group, Lucien Grange, was attending these parties and had direct knowledge of all of the crimes, or at least some of the crimes that I just mentioned. And again, this is all allegedly according to this lawsuit, which has a lot of evidence to support it. And Lucien Grange is the CEO of Universal Music Group, which is massive. And this is just my opinion from reading the lawsuit, but it looks like what it's alleging is that Diddy, with help of associates, is acquiring blackmail on rappers that are getting signed into the industry and other musicians too, and then promoting them because they are now in the club. And so if the CEO of Universal Music Group is aware of this operation or in some ways involved, how much of the music industry is controlled by Universal Music Group? Well, what I did is I went to the Billboard Top 100 and I grabbed all these songs by these different artists and put them into a chart. And that chart looked like this. And then I did the research to figure out what record labels own those songs. And when it's all done, Universal controls 33 out of 2023's Top 100 songs. That is one third of the music on the top hits charts. And I'm not alleging that all of that music was done through this sexual blackmail scheme. I'm not alleging that it's all a direct causal relationship. I'm just pointing out how small and consolidated and tied together the music industry is. So he referenced, and, and you know, this guy, uh, Lucian Grange, who Universal Music Group and CEO Lucian Grange dismissed from lawsuit involving Sean Diddy Combs. So just for context, uh, what he was accused of being named in the official suit and in, in the original suit, and then now being dismissed uh, from that suit. But 
between him uh, and the Clive Davises of the world, right? Remember what Clive Davis did to Whitney Houston, how he is so intricately connected to so much death and devastation in the black community. But these type of guys don't get canceled, right? They just kind of stay above the fray and watch the, the house sort of come, tum come tumbling down. But it's still, this is another representation of the morphic field because, you know, if, if who turned Diddy out? Who is that ever going to come to surface? Is that ever going to come to light? Right? Is he? He said they blackmail you. Have you get blackmailed? You do certain ser sexual innuendos within the house. You're on camera now. You're blackmailed. So now you can get in the club. Rappers. You think the the regular other celebrities, the white celebrities, don't have to deal with that? Of course they do. So it ju it's just emphasizing the point of like, why would they get off on the uh, on 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 hurting these people, on demoralizing these people, on putting them through hum humiliation rituals, like Will Smith. <laughs> Slapped Chris Rock, became a slave in a movie, got humiliated by his wife and all of media, and now all of a sudden he's all back in uh, uh, the new Bad Boys movie, back on top of the world like nothing ever happened. And he's been through that a few times. So being blackmailed, sexual innuendos, and now you're in the club. But once you're in the club, that doesn't mean, okay, you good, everything is, you know, wipe the slate clean. No, that means you got to pay to stay in the club. So the energy harvesting of the musicians, of the concerts, the whole LED aspect and the 5G aspects that are in these concerts right now, which I believe and have a strong belief that the concerts are, they're like opening up portals in these people and using them for mind control. And then you've got the, uh, I saw a video of the, the cypher, what's the name of that thing? <laughs> We've talked about it a few times in headline news, the, uh, the, the, the circular uh, stadium in Vegas, the, and they're building one in London as well. The cypher, not the cypher, you guys know what it is. But anyway, I saw a video of it on the inside uh, and it was like a portal. I almost put it in, but I was trying to be mindful of time. But I'm saying all of that to say these there's a lot of different portals that are happening in the music and in the and in Hollywood that are sort of siphoning and harnessing energy. This Diddy situation is a portal that is siphoning and harnessing energy. We have to be very careful about how we look at this stuff, how much time and attention we give to it. Yeah, we can all, you know, talk about it. We're talking about it right now. But this is one thing and I, you know, it gets it's a blip on the map in terms of the real what we understand was going on. This is these people are representing the tight on the Titanic when the musicians were on top of the ship playing music to keep everybody distracted from the fact that they were headed towards an iceberg. That's a great metaphor of this for me. So when I saw Diddy going back to the Love album and the color scheme that they were using to promote this album really stood out to me because again, this red uh, 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 red and white color backdrop tying into the high handmaid's tale and everything else that we talked about that we've talked about. Uh, this was another thing right on the heels of the whole weird Joker performance. So the Rolling Stones did an article called A Brief Look at Diddy's History of Controversy Controversies and Allegations. I'm just going to peruse through this. It's a pretty extensive list. Um, <laughs> if I read the whole thing, it would probably take me 20 minutes, but I'm going to read a couple of these that you may or may not be aware of, but just to bring it all into context in terms of that for the frequency of the Joker energy, right? There's a reason why he played that, that character so well, because he's been playing it on another level for a long time now, especially if you think that the, what we think is happening where somebody's like turning these dudes out, you know, okay, you got to kiss the ring and, and get bent over by the head, whoever the head guy is or the head get guys are, right? We're going to put you on, but there's a price to pay. And so that has to split a part of your personality, your soul, the righteous part of you, right? Because you had to sell a part of yourself for that. So this ties back for him for a long time now. The CCNY tragedy of 1991, Combs co-promoted a celebrity basketball game and concert at City College of New York, where nine people died and 29 people were injured. 
The gym had a capacity of 2,730 people, but as many as 5,000 people showed up to the event, which didn't have enough security to control the throng. After organizers closed the door and stopped letting attendees in, people outside broke the gymnasium's door and rushed the lobby, causing a stampede. Then New York City Mayor David Dinkins' administration published a 67 report called A Failure of Responsibility that cited Combs for hiring inadequate, inexperienced security. Combs settled a slew of lawsuits from family members of attendees who died at the gymnasium following this last suit in 2000. Now we can look at a situation like this and be like, oh yeah, that's you know, bad planning, bad organization, right? Yes, security, dot, dot, dot. This was carefully mis you know, mismanaged, right? He should have, have had to pay the families, whatever. But then we can also say, well, there's no like criminal liability like this to this, because obviously nobody intended for this to happen, right? There's both of those aspects, but then there's also the morphic field and energetic resonance aspect of this, right? Because on that level, there are no victims. And so for something as dramatic and traumatic of an experience to happen in this put to this man in 1991, right? That's just a, a piece of the puzzle. And then to fast forward us to 2024, where he is going through an extreme level of public humiliation and, and exposure, uh, the likes of, I don't think anything we've ever seen. I mean, we could compare Michael Jackson, but the, the, the prime of Michael Jackson's, you know, controversies, we didn't have social media the way that we have it now. It wasn't 24 hours, seven days a week news cycles, right? So an, a, an extreme tragedy like that happening at, at the sort of inception of the fame starting and then leading us to where we, here we are and here we are again, still having extreme traumatic experiences. The Jake Robles shooting of 1995, um, this is when uh, Diddy and, or Puff and Suge Knight were both at a, at a club together. And one of Suge Knight's friends ended up getting shot by, uh, allegedly, uh, Puffy's people. And that Suge knows this and there's a whole backstory to it, but I don't want to read the whole thing because the passage is a little bit longer, but so you have a situation there where someone ends up dead connected to Diddy, you know, with a lot of very strong evidence that he was involved and may have even called that you know, called the hit. Attacking Steve Stout in 1998, um, Combs and two other men attacked Steve Stout after the music executive, then Nas manager, erroneously sent MTV a version of Combs and Nas Hate Me Now music video, which contains scenes depicting Combs as Jesus Christ being crucified. Combs wanted the cruc crucifixion scene deleted from the video and was estranged, enraged that it played on air. Stout says that Combs and two men barged into his New York City office and attacked him with a champagne bottle. And I'm not going to read all of that because I know probably a lot of you guys are probably aware of that. The club, uh, New York shooting in 1999. This is when he and Shine were in the club together. And basically, long story short, two men drove, allegedly Shine and Diddy both drew guns and shot three times into the club. And uh, three people were shot. Diddy was arrested with two nine millimeter guns in his car. He was charged with four weapons charges and for bribing his driver to claim the guns were his own. A witness at the trial said she saw both Shine and Combs shoot their weapons, but Combs was acquitted on all charges while Shine was found guilty of five of his eight charges and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. And of course, Shine has recently come forward and said, see, I told you guys, I never was the one who did the shooting, dot, dot, dot. Plus he, you know, he still did 10 years. Um, he had a scuffle with J. Cole in 2013. I didn't even know about this. Um, at the 2023 uh, MTV Awards after party, uh, it says that Diddy was intoxicated and he confronted Kendrick Lamar about something he mentioned about being the king of New York. And J. Cole intervened and they got into a fight. Um, and yeah, it was a back and forth. They exchanged words. Um, and so, yeah, Diddy, Diddy allegedly... Well, it says no punch, punches were thrown, but then it also says that they, they got into a fight. So maybe it was just a confrontation. Um, he allegedly punched Drake in 2014. I'm not going to read all of that, but that's the gist of it. 2015, he had a fight with one of the coaches and threatened one of the coaches at UCLA over his son, Justin. Uh, his girlfriend, Gina 
Quinn back in 2019 alleges abuse. He, she said that he kicked her in the stomach and I also read somewhere else that she was pregnant at the time. Cassie came forward and filed the, the claims, the civil suit charges in 2023. Um, there was another lady who came forward and said he raped her in 1991 and also put revenge porn out on her that there was a video circulating that he shared uh, of him doing that to her. Um, another sexual assault. And then the guy, uh, Rod Hayes, I think his name was, I'm kind of sh fast forwarding through these because I want to move, move through this. Um, two other women have come forward as of late. Um, oh, that's the, the passage on Rod Hayes. But two other four, uh, women have come forward as of late within the last couple of days saying that he sexually assaulted both of them. So I'm saying all of that, right, to say this is a carefully crafted spectacle, one of many spectacles to come. And so I'm kind of like taking, you know, a little bit more time to to really kind of look at this, because if this these sort of, you know, very strong energetic shifts in awareness and how we're seeing this world crumbling, because that's what's happening. This is celebrity culture crumbling right in front of our eyes. It's, it's, and it's not just him. It's all the people who knew and didn't say anything. It's all the people that everybody kind of look up to and want to be like. And it turns out that they're all really cowards or compromised or serving Satan, right? Or victims, not to, you know, put a victim in the same category as serving Satan, but a lot of the victims end up serving Satan because they made the deal in the first place, which made them victims, right? But being mindful of how much energy and attention we're giving these things, you know, tapping in, but then also stepping back because there's major energy harvesting going, harvesting going on. And this is how I've been continuing to say uh, in the bigger scheme of things, why all of these things are being reeled in the spiritual warfare that's playing itself out right now. Part of that war is the black and white dynamic, obviously, but then the male female dynamic and the masculine feminine dynamic has to come back into balance. And so everything that's not in alignment with the divine feminine is getting ready to be destroyed or and or purged. That goes for all of the women who are not in alignment with the divine feminine as well. I highly suggest you tap in with the divine feminine right now because we are absolutely taking the world back. And just to emphasize, I'm not just talking about women. <laughs> I wanted to make sure this was real. 